Hi, this is Tony Maeda, and I'm so excited to be here with the one and only Jerry Carmichael, all grown up, Mr. Jimmy Garrett. Thank you Pleasure so to meet much you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. You were seven years old. Do you remember your first encounter with uh, Lucille Ball? I uh, absolutely remember my first encounter. How would you not? I Love Lucy was in reruns mm -hmm. at that point, and we, um, I had done a pilot for Desi Lu called Suzuki Bean. I think that's how she became aware of me. Plus, Elliot Lewis produced Suzuki Bean, who went on to uh, right. produce The Lucy Show for the first right. couple of seasons, I believe. Do you remember the uh, interview? Well, the first thing we did is we had to interview with Kerwin Coughlin, who was the Desi Lu mm -hmm. casting director. And I'll, I'll never forget, we went down for the initial interview. And I, you know, Mr. Coughlin knew me from Suzuki Bean, and all the kids would go in and spend 10 minutes and would come out. Yeah. And I went in, spent about five seconds and came out and got in the car. And my mom drove about a third of the way home and said, please, you got to tell me what happened in there. Why were you only in there for five seconds? And I said, oh, Mr. Coughlin knows me. He said, just, I want to see what you look like and I'll have you back for the, for the uh, interviews with uh, Lucy and Viv. After I had my interview with Kerwin Coughlin, they called us back at a later date. We went to the Desi Luke Gower Studios. Um, it seemed like every kid in town was there. Um, mm -hmm. They had Ralphs and Jerry's mm -hmm. and Chris's mm -hmm. all over the place, and they would take us in and try different mixes of the kids. Mm -hmm. And then later, after we'd been there for a while, Lucy and Viv came in and started to read with the kids. They brought us in, and I said my first line, what am I, invisible or something? What's the matter with me? Have I suddenly become invisible? <laughs> Lucy just cracked up. She goes, he talks just, I love the way he talks. He talks so funny, and I love that. And it seemed like they kept bringing in Ralph's, and they'd try other Jerry's, but mm -hmm. I kept going back in, and I remember Ralph's agent kept saying, you and Ralph are going to get the job. Mm -hmm. You and Ralph are going to get the job. And I remember uh, Tommy Thompson, the first AD, came out and said, um, Jimmy Garrett and Ralph Hart, please stay. Can everybody else go home? Did you know Ralph Hart before you started working with him? I had not met Ralph Hart. Because you guys had such great chemistry. Well, we didn't know each other beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, we basically met at the interviews. And we developed a friendship mm -hmm. over time. And I think it was a big brother-little brother, -little brother yeah. kind of relationship that evolved. Yeah. How about Candy Moore? What's well, Candy Moore was Candy. lovely. And what's interesting, though, um, is Candy, when we left on the interviews, we believed that uh, it was going to be Deborah Wally that played the Chris character. And I don't know why, what happened behind the scenes, but when we showed up to start the show, here was this lovely Candy Moore that came in. She was just gorgeous, just beautiful. Uh, she was sweet as can be. Did you feel like she was a big sister? I, I still feel like she's my big sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was Desi Arnaz involved at all in the casting? He was involved as executive producer mm -hmm. for the first, I don't know, eight or ten episodes mm -hmm. that we were there. But he was very involved. Um, Lucy put a lot of faith in Desi, even after the divorce, right. because uh, if there was ever anything that wasn't working, she'd call up to his office, he'd come down and take a look, and he generally knew how to fix it. Now, you have an interesting situation in that you're one of Lucille Ball's three sons, two sort of sons. We've got right. little Ricky, obviously Richard Keith, and you. Were you close with you, Desi Jr.? Did you hang out with them? When you well, Desi was, and uh, Keith and Ralph were all around the same age, mm -hmm. and they had a tendency to hang out around together. I was kind of like the little brother. It's like, uh, you know, we'll go get in trouble without, yeah, you know, the little yeah. brother. Green, white, green, white, green, white. Hey. <laughs> Whatever happened to... Tis the season to be jolly. What are your memories of Vivian Vance? The thing I always find interesting in Vivian Vance, when people talk about her or talk about the shows, is I don't think people realized what a comedy team they actually were. Uh, they worked together. They rehearsed together. And I, I can't tell you how many times I heard Viv say to Lucy, you know, honey, if, if I wait a beat and then do this, I think it'll be even funnier. Well, let's try it. And they would, they would work through things. Yeah, Lucy was very impressed by others' talents. You know, she would always watch how other people worked, other actors and stars on the show. What was your relationship like with her? To me, she was very maternal. She was never 
harsh or, or a disciplinarian. I, I hear that said sometimes, mm -hmm. but with me, she couldn't have been lovely. Yeah. She used to call me the baby, oh, you know, okay. so, you know, cool. let's get the baby, let's do this, and even though I was seven and didn't like particularly being <laughs> called, like the called the baby. baby. You did have some wonderful deliveries, some wonderful lines. Thank you. I got lucky. They gave me some great Thank stuff. You. This is a facial mask I'm wearing to make me look pretty. Gee, Mom, I thought you looked prettier without it. <laughs> I have to give it some credit. I had a good dialogue coach, yeah. my mom. What we would do is we would get the scripts on Thursdays, and over the weekends, when I would be going to sleep, my mom would come in, and instead of reading me a story or something like that, we'd go over Run the lines. scripts. You were on lines, yeah. Lines. And usually by Monday morning, I'd have the entire, you know, my entire part uh -huh. memorized, yeah. You had a lot of what, was it Vivian who referred to them as Fred Mertz lines? Well, she originally said it. It hadn't occurred to me, mm -hmm. you know. All I know is I got these lines that people laughed at. And it just, it was thrilling. Mm -hmm. And after the first show, she picked me up and whispered into my ear. She went, oh, you were so good tonight. You were so funny. And she goes, you delivered your Fred line better than that old poop could have ever done. <laughs> this is the most blackest day of my entire life. Were there 